Hello Accounting Superstars, this is Professor Don Bush from the Accounting Superstar channel. So glad you're here. I've been a professor for about 30 years and a CPA for about that long and I've got great ways to explain accounting. So welcome aboard. Today's lesson is about cost of goods manufactured and sold statement. It's designed for students who are, who are probably in their second semester of accounting, studying managerial accounting. Now some people, some professors, some textbooks will stop at the cost of goods manufactured and uh, leave it at that and some books and some professors and some people will uh, do the cost of goods manufactured and sold statement so there's there's a little bit added to uh, uh, the end there now with, with this statement uh, there are three types of inventories three raw materials work in process and finished goods. And so if you're doing the cost of goods manufacturer statement, you just do the first two inventory accounts, raw materials, work in process. However, if you wanna do the cost of goods manufactured and sold statement, you do all three. And you do raw materials, work in process and finished goods. I kinda of like the, the one where you do it all, all three and, and it's really easy. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'll show you how to do it my way cause I've got a real cool way to do it. And I'll show you the way that textbooks do it. All right, so here we go. So we've got a whole lot of information right here. And we're going to use this information in a minute. I won't go over it because it'll take too long. It'll be boring. So um, let's go down to the key to success, though. Here's how it all works. Uh, all three uh, inventories work the same way. So here we go. Start with beginning inventory. Add purchases minus ending inventory or less ending inventory equals cost goods sold. So this whole statement works just like this. It's really easy. And to put it in real easy, simple terms, I'll use really small numbers here. If you start with $5 in your beginning inventory and you purchase $10 more of inventory, that gives you 15, right? Five plus 10 is 15. Minus the ending inventory, uh, suppose you only have three left. So here's what's going on. You started with five, you, you bought 10 more, so you have 15, and at the end of the day, you only have three left. How many did you sell here? Well, you sold $12 worth of inventory. I like to think of it like apples. You start the day with five apples, you buy 10 more apples, that gives you 15 apples, and at the end of the day, you only have three apples left. So how many apples were eaten? Well, 12 apples were eaten. So if you can do this three times, you can do it. Because what we're gonna do, we're going to do it once for raw materials, a second time for work and process, and a third time for finished goods. And I've got a real cool way of doing it. Now, the way that I do it, you won't find this in any textbooks. Um, I made it up. I, I'm, And I've had a lot of professors uh, ask if they could use my method of doing it. And I've always told them, sure, why not? And what I ought to do is charge them for it. That, that's what I should do, right? So, okay. So here's the uh, uh, original information and we're going to use it right now. So uh, this is the uh, Sunset Sailboat Company, cost of goods manufactured and sold for the month ending April 30th, 2001. Now it's really important to have these, these three items. You know, number one, you want to know what company you're doing this for because it's real easy to get things mixed up. And second, you want to have, well, what statement is this? So people know what they're looking at. And thirdly, and very important, is the date. And this uh, statement covers a period of time, like this one's covering April, the month of April. And maybe another statement will cover the whole year or something. So so here's what how it works. We're going to start out with raw materials. So we're going to say, okay, what's the beginning raw materials? Beginning direct raw materials, and it's $30. So where'd I get that information? I got it from right there, and I'm going to highlight it. All right, and then uh, we're going to add purchases. So how much raw materials did we buy? Plus direct raw material purchases and it happens to be $290, so let's add that in there. And we're going to subtract out whatever's left. <clears throat> Remember the apples? We're gonna subtract out 20, that came from right there. So how, how much raw materials were used? So cost of direct raw materials used. And so if you do the math, if you go 30 plus 290 minus away 20, you're going to get 
$300 of raw materials were used. All right, so hang on to that number. We're going to need it. We'll need it here in a second. So let's come down to the second part. We've got three inventories, so we're going to do this three times. This is now the second time that we're doing this. So starting out with beginning work in process. So here it is, beginning work in process, $60. Let's drop it into place. Add in. Now here, here's something really cool. What we're going to do is we're going to add in direct raw materials used. So here's raw materials and we got the number right here. I'll highlight it in a different color just so it stands out and we're going to place it right in this spot. So there you go, $300. So all what's happening is this $300 is just get, getting carried down and you're going to see the same thing's going to happen down here later. So, uh, so let's add in, let's see here what comes next. Direct labor. So direct labor is right here, and I'll highlight that for us. There we go. Add in $500. And let's add in the overhead, because by now I hope you know that three things go into work and process. The raw materials, the, the direct labor, and the overhead. Yeah, And uh, work and process is where everything comes together. So uh, let's see here. Plus the overhead. There we are, plus overhead, and we're getting the number from right up there. Drop it down into place. There we are. And now we have to subtract out the ending work in process, and we get that right here. And let's drop it into place. All right, so now you have to do a little bit of basic math. 60 plus 300 plus 500 plus 400 minus away 50, and you will get the cost of goods manufactured. So there we are. So all you do is total up this column, really. You know, make sure you subtract out the 50 and you'll have it. So we've done this twice. We've done this formula twice, this cost of goods sold formula. And so we need to do it just one more time. So here we go. It starts out with beginning finished goods. And our beginning finished goods is 300. It comes from right there, 300 bucks. And then we would um, add in our cost of goods manufactured. And you might say, where do we get that? Well, we just figured it out. It was right here. And I'm going to highlight this in a different color. Oh, real pretty blue color. How's that? Hope that shows up on, on your screen. Okay. So let's drop that number right into place. So this cost of goods ma manufactured, it just gets carried down. Just like what we did up above. Here's what we did up above. Our cost of direct raw materials used got carried down. And so our cost of goods manufactured gets carried down. So let's go down to the next line. Next line is minus away or less ending finished goods inventory. And here's where we get the number right there. So minus away 210. There we go. And we get our final answer. Cost of goods sold. $1,300. All you do to figure that out is 300 plus 1,010 uh, minus away 210, and you get 1,300. So there you go. We are done. And so uh, a lot of people will stop right at this point. They'll say, good enough. That's all the farther I want to go with this. And then other people will carry it all the way down and get cost of goods sold. And myself, just speaking for myself, I like to carry it all the way down because it's so easy. So let's do this. Let's do the textbook format because who knows if your professor will accept um, the way I do it. But of course, in my classes, I, I accept the way I like doing it. So here's the um, statement. We still need the three titles, right? We still need the name of the company, Sunset Sailboat Company. We need the title of what this is, what we're looking at, cost of goods manufactured and sold, and we need the date. And it's also always got to be a time period. So let's do this, guys and gals. Let's do it the textbook method. The textbook method and my method have a lot of similarities, but I think my way is a little easier. So I'm going to make this all the same old print and we'll just kind of start over again. Now here's how this works. The first line of the textbook method 
is uh, a little different. It starts out with beginning work in process. Well, that's kind of weird. Beginning work in process. There it is, $60. And, and this is the reason why I don't really like the textbook method. I think my way is better. And what will happen here is coming down, coming down. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it this way here just to explain it. There we go. All right. So right in this space here, almost all the way down, I'm going to have ending work in process. And ending work in process is $50. It comes from right there. And I'll put it into place. So the way I think of it here is I think of it is that the, uh, the account work in process is giving us a big hug, okay? We're going to put all kinds of things inside the hug. And so right here, this is the hug, okay? Sorry about explaining it that way. I apologize, but it's just how it, I, it, I think of it. Okay, so what's going to go on in here is um, we're going to put a lot of things that we've already seen inside of here. But uh, work in process kind of encompasses all of this. Okay, so coming down to the next line here, direct raw materials. So we're going to work on direct raw materials. And actually, this little section here is going to be identical to what we did here. Okay, that was easy to understand. So we'll, we're just going to do the same thing. Alrighty, so here's how it starts. Beginning uh, direct raw materials is 30. Where'd that number come from? It came from right there, and let me highlight it. There we go. And then we're going to add raw material purchases. It comes from right there. There we go. And we're going to subtract out ending direct raw material inventory, and it's $20, and it comes from here. So this is really what we did before just looks different okay and, and this equals cost of raw materials used so let's put that number right here 300 how do we get 300 well 30 plus 290 minus 20 is 300 all right so now we've got to add in the other things that go into work and process because work and process is where all the action is it's where everything comes together so the next thing we're going to add is direct labor. So let's see what it is here. $500 and it came from right there. We're going to add in manufacturing overhead, which comes from right here. $400 and there we go. 400 bucks. There it is. And here's what we're going to do here. We're going to um, just get it like a subtotal here. Total work and process cost. All right. 1260 so here's how it comes about, is you, you add up your beginning work in process, your raw materials used, your direct labor, your manufacturing overhead, and get a total. In fact, what I'll do is I'll kind of color code these a little bit, just so they're easier to see. Let me start right here. So here we go. We're going to add up the 60 and these numbers right here. So the 60, and that might be kind of hard to see on your computer screen. I don't know. It's good. It's a little hard for me to see. So the 60 and the 300, 500, and the 400 adds up to 1260. And then what we do is we subtract out our ending work in process. That's, that's one of the arms of the work in process hug. <clears throat> and we get cost of goods manufactured. There it is, 1210. And that is the exact same number that we got when we did it before, right here, right there, okay? When we did it, my, my way of doing it. So coming down here, let's do the last section. Now, the last section is identical to what we've already done. What, what we did right here, finished goods, exact same thing, what we did up here. No different. So here you go beginning finished goods inventory. Where do we get the number? 300 bucks right there. And let me put it in the right place. There it is. Came from right there. All right. And then we're going to add in cost of goods manufactured and we get that number right from here. So this number here, I'll highlight that. It's going to come down right into this spot right there. So there we go. 
12, 10. And then we subtract out ending finished goods inventory. Where do we get that? It's right up here at 210. Right there. And coming down, drop it into place. There you are. Now do the math and you're going to get cost of goods sold, our final answer. So 300 plus 1210 minus 1210 is 1300. There's our cost of goods sold. And we, we saw this already. Cost of goods sold, 1300. There you are. Right there. Same deal. So either way you do it, you're going to get the same answer. It's just that I think my way of doing it's a little, little more straightforward, a little easier. So I hope this lesson helped you out, folks. And if it did, hit the like button and the subscribe button. That way I'll know you like these and I'll make some more videos for you. Also, check out accountingsuperstars.com. I've got all these videos listed by topics. So check them out. So until next time, over and out.